Last night we completed the 24th juz, which comprises of Surah Al-Zumar, Surah Al-Mu'min, also known as Surah Al-Ghafir, and Surah Fusilat. Today, inshallah, I'm just going to be talking about a few verses from Surah Al-Zumar, which talk about the huge mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how He likes to forgive. Ramadan is a time in which we turn in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him to forgive us our sins with the intention of making and changing our lives for the better after Ramadan and not just being pious in Ramadan and then forgetting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afterwards. So this is an ideal time to make tawbah and repent. It is mentioned that Wahshi ibn Harb, he came to the Prophet والسلام, and asked him whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to forgive him or not. Wahshi ibn Harb was the person who was sent by Hind bint Utbah to kill the uncle of the Prophet والسلام, Hamza radiallahu And he did so in the Battle of Uhud. And not only did he kill him, but he also took out his entrails, his liver, and um, his insides, and he brought them back to Hind to prove that he had been killed. So ultimately, he wanted to make tawbah, he wanted to become Muslim, but he was afraid that the sin that he had committed it would not be forgiven. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed some very special verses in which he addresses his slaves, all his slaves. And he says, Qul ya ibadi, tell them, O Prophet of Allah, O my slaves. So this, first of all, the concept of slavery uh, in this country, it has been tainted with the history of slavery because of the bad uh, way that slavery was conducted and how slaves were brought into this country. So there's kind of a negative connotation related to that. But the concept of the slave in Islam, and when we say the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is because you are full time in the obedience and submission and subservience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why a person is called a slave. When we say ibadah in Arabic, this word ibadah is derived from the word abd. And Many people just assume that ibadah is a ritual thing that you do, uh, which is, of course, an obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But ibadah is much more than that. Ibadah is making yourself a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and subservient to Him 24 hours a day. That's what uh, ibadah is, and that's why it's derived from the word abd, the same root letters. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us slaves. The other thing is that when the idhafa is done towards something great, idhafa meaning to show possession towards something great, then the one who is the mudaf becomes uh, great because of that. So say for example you say the word a servant or a worker, okay, so a servant, you know, he, okay, he's a servant, he's a worker, employee. But if you say that he's an employee of the king, automatically this idafa, this possession, it changes the employee, the servant, into being a, a very important, a noble servant, not just a regular servant, but the servant of the king. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he has made idafa to himself. And he said, my slaves. You're not anybody else's slaves, you are my slaves. So honoring the slave and the servant and elevating his status by making this idafa to himself. O oh my slaves, tell them, O oh my slaves, alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim. Those that have transgressed against themselves. 
just because you committed a sin, it doesn't mean that I've forgotten about you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and it doesn't mean that you cannot come back to me. This is, again, the height of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the person for whom this verse is revealed, he's being addressed, who's committed such a huge sin as the murder of the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So those slaves, those of my slaves that have transgressed against themselves, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So a person should never lose hope Once he has committed a sin He should always turn in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, A person should never become despondent A person should never think that Allah is never going to forgive me There are uh, many sins that people commit And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them if the uh, repentance, if the tawbah is sincere. Inna Allah yaghfiru al-dunuba jami'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the sins. And to stress what kind of sins, He doesn't limit them. And He says jami'a. Jami'a, this is a word of ta'kid, emphasis. Which means everything, everything that a person wants to make tawbah from and take repentance from and ask forgiveness from Allah will forgive those sins innahu huwal ghafur rahim indeed he is forgiving and merciful wa anibu ila rabbikum wa aslimu lahu min qabli an ya'tiyakum al adhab thumma la tunsarun turn to your lord inaba it is part of tawbah to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's from the word nawbah to, uh, to make a turn after turn. Anibu, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa aslimu lahu. Submit yourself to him. Submit yourself. Become a complete Muslim. Submit yourself to, to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before a punishment comes, thumma la tunsarun. So there's a time for the tawbah to take place. And the tawbah for a person is before ما لم يغرغر يقبل توبة العبد ما لم يغرغر that the توبة of a person is accepted as long as his soul is not being removed from his body okay so before that a person has to make توبة if he sees ملك الموت he sees the angel of death coming to him and he says now I'm making توبة it's too late وليس التوبة للذين يعملون السيئات حتى إذا حضر أحدهم الموت قال إني تبت الآن ولا الذين يموتون وهم كفار. The توبه is not for the person who sees the angel of death and says I made توبه now. The توبه, the repentance has to be made much earlier than that. So before a punishment comes to you from Allah سبحانه وتعالى then you will not be helped. واتبعوا أحسن ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب بغتة وأنتم لا تشعرون. So in the previous ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there are three steps. Anibu, make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go back to him. Aslimu lahu, submit yourself to him. And the third thing here, Allah says, that follow the good that was revealed to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was the Qur'an. Follow the Qur'an to the letter. Before a punishment suddenly comes to you, وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ And you don't even realize it. And then Allah goes into describing the different things that a person, the, the different feelings and the psychologies that a person has or the excuses that a person has when he is faced with this punishment if he has not made tawbah. So one is أَن تَقُولَ نَفْسٌ يَا حَسْرَةَ عَلَى مَا فَرَّطُ فِي جَنْبِ اللَّهِ وَإِن كُنْتُ لَمِنَ السَّاخِرِينَ The first thing a person will say is يَا حَسْرَةَ Woe unto me عَلَى مَا فَرَّطُ because of the deficiency I displayed fi jambillah in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning I didn't try to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa in kuntu lamina sakhirin and I remained a person who continued joking and ridiculing the religion so this is the first thing that a person will say I wish that I had not wasted my time in ridiculing and making fun of the religion أو تقول لو أن الله هداني لكنت من المتقين 
Or a person is going to say, if Allah had guided me, then I would, would have been from the people of taqwa. So again, even at that time, instead of blaming himself, he blames Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Said, Allah didn't guide me. What am I supposed to do? Okay. So this is, again, a level of arrogance that people have that they blame everything on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't take self-responsibility for their actions. So Allah guides people for those people who want guidance and seek guidance. If people don't want guidance and they are insisting upon committing, committing disobedience and staying in kufr and shirk, Allah will not give guidance to them. And this is the concept of tawfiq. When, he, when we say we ask Allah to give us tawfiq to do something, what that means is we will embark upon doing that thing. We will start, we will take the first steps and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the way easy for the person. The person who gives has taqwa and he believes in the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will make the way towards yusra, jannah, easy for him. But the main thing is stepping up to the plate and doing what you're supposed to be doing and not waiting for guidance to come. A person needs to seek guidance and he needs to uh, be active in finding it. أو تقول حين ترى العذاب لو أن لي كرة فأكون من المحسنين. The third type of person is going to say when he sees the punishment لو أن لي كرة. If only I had another chance. It is mentioned in many places in the Quran that when the angel of death comes to people, they're going to ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى Oh Allah, give me some more time. Give me a little bit more, uh, a few more days, a few more months, so that I can turn to you, I can make tawbah to you, I can give sadaqah, I can do good deeds, and I can prepare myself for the hereafter. But obviously, now, it's too late. So, the third person will say, when he sees the punishment, If I had another chance, then I would be the ones who perfect their religion completely. I'll be a perfect person if I get this chance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to that and said, Bala qad ja'atka ayati fakadabta biha wa stakbarta wa kunta min al kafirin. There were three things that you did. Indeed, my signs came to you. My signs, they came to you. The Prophet came to you. The Messenger came to you. The people in the masjid, the imam, the uh, good people, the pious people, your parents, they reminded you again and again. biha. You denounced them, de denied them, rejected them. Wastakbarta. And you continue to be arrogant. Wa kunta min al kafirin. And you became from the kafirin. Kafirin can mean either disbelievers or the ungrateful ones. So basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has, first of all, open up the door of Tawbah and said that the repentance is accepted from everybody and anybody if their repentance is sincere. And that Tawbah will be accepted as long as the time of death does not come and after which people will start making excuses and at that time it will be too late. So now is the time for Tawbah, now is the time for repentance. This is the month of Ramadan is going on. And we need to think about so many people. We just announced today somebody's death. So many people that I've heard of in this month were well, at least three or four people that were in their 40s, in the prime of their youth, you would say, very young age, that have passed away in this month alone. They go and they leave a lesson for us. Okay, so we need to make sure that the few days that we have left, we are utilizing them to the best of our ability making sure we are turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making life-changing decisions about where we want to go and how we want to lead our life. And this is basically what tawbah is. This is what turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. The word tawbah, it means to return. Return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Returning back to Him where we, we should be in the first place. So this is something that we need to be considering and thinking about in these last few days of Ramadan, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tawfiq to understand and practice what has been said and heard. <laughs>
Thank you.